Good morning. Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I'm Pastor Joe Fox. It's a little chilly this morning. I actually have a long sleeve shirt on. And uh, that's kind of what I want to talk about, the approaching winter, right? The approaching economic winter. Uh, people are talking about it. You've heard about it. You know, you're probably doing some research on it. You probably talked to people about it, blogged about it, talked on the internet about it. Um, yeah, it's coming. It's going to come like a freight train, and like a freight train, it's going to hit unexpectedly. Um, it's going to hit violently, and there's going to be a lot of destruction. Um, okay, cool. So we kind of realize that intellectually. What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? Um, there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of advice out there. There always is. Here's another one. Um, but here's the thing I'm all about doing, and you need to start doing. If you're not, please start. Um, first thing, anything that you don't have paid off, be prepared to have it taken from you. The whole purpose of this economic crash that's coming is to consolidate wealth, and they want yours. They want what you got. Um, I think another purpose is to fur further delineate the haves and the have-nots, and they want to be the haves, and they don't want you messing with their little system. So your your plan to be a have-not. Um, so think about that. Um, but what can you do? You know, I lived in a city. Uh, I've lived in a couple. I've lived in the suburbs. I've lived in really heavy suburbs, you know, almost city, northern Virginia. Um, I've lived in regular suburbs. I've lived kind of out in the country where there were cows across the street. Uh, and now I live in the sticks, right? I live out here in the Ozarks, and uh, it looks like this. Uh, this is by far the best place to live uh, as far as surviving some kind of economic downturn goes. Um, not just the Ozarks, but, you know, out in the boonies uh, where people make do for themselves, where people don't have things like pizza delivered, um, but instead they can, you know, grow grapes in their backyard, you know, that kind of thing. Um, where people learn to get along uh, without stuff, you know, where people learn to uh, put aside their immediate wants for whatever, you know, uh, new clothes, new car, new food, you know, pff, just live life. And, and so these people are already in economic hard times where I live, um, and so they're used to, to getting along in them, um, and it's a good place to live, I think. Um, there's also not a lot of people out here. Uh, one reason is because there's not a lot of jobs. So what am I telling you to do? Am I telling you to sell everything you have and move to the boonies? Yes, <laughs> but I realize you're not going to do that. Um, but that is the way to go. You know, we had people come out here to Shofar Mountain who basically sold their houses, gave up their rentals, uh, moved out, and, and moved out here to Shofar Mountain uh, to make a go at it. Um, and that's the right move, right? And it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard physically. It's hard emotionally. It's hard mentally. And it's hard relationshiply. <laughs> it's not a word, right? Um, we've had ups and downs here. We've had people come and we've had people go. And they're good people, all right? It's just that just because you're a good person, just because you uh, generally want what everybody wants, uh, you know, working together is hard and sometimes there are differences, irreconcilable differences, right? Um, but you know what? Most of the people who moved out here and then moved away from Shofar Mountain in the last eight months, um, they're still doing this, right? They're still living on the land out in the boonies, trying to make a go, trying to get gardens going and stuff like that. So what am I telling you there? Uh, you need people and you need time and you're running out of time. Um, so start working with the people you have. Uh, if you can't move to the boonies, you can't move. Okay, whatever. I, I'm, I don't want to hear it. You don't need to comment and tell me I can't move. Um, but what you can do, start working with people. Start getting along with people. <laughs> That's easy for me to say, right? Um, <clears throat> but you need to try. You need to get along with your neighbors. Um, and you need to form some kind of relationship uh, that, that's a helpful relationship. You know, we go out of our way with our neighbors around here who don't believe the way we believe, all right? Um, but they're still people, and they still live out here. And, you know, we help them with things like down trees. We help them with chores around their place. You know, we look out for them. We talk to them. We give them things, you know, like, you know, honey, milk, food. They give us things like milk, food wood. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's country living. Um, and so start getting along with people. Start growing food. You can start now. Uh, start growing food. Drive around your neighborhood, your, your place where you live, wherever that is, and uh, find the garden, right? There's people out there that have gardens. There's people that have nice, I'm talking vegetable gardens, nice vegetable gardens. Stop in and say, hello, I'm Bob. I'm Sally. 
I want to learn how to garden. Um, what should I grow right now? What could I plant right now? Because there's always something you can plant and do. And most people who garden uh, will tell you what, what they think you should do. And start your garden because it takes time. Uh, when I lived up north in Kansas, we're in the Ozarks now. When I lived up north in Kansas, um, we had a great garden, my wife and I. We could sustain ourselves off of our garden, plus our bees, our chickens, and our goats up there. And then we moved down here to the Ozarks, and uh, it's a learning curve, all right? We've had some failures, and uh, we're still on it. And my latest thing, well, I'll... My latest thing is we're going to do raise, a combination raised bed back to Eden kind of thing. We're going to actually buy dirt and bring it in. That'll be another video for another time. But the bottom line, I've been here for eight months. We haven't figured it out yet. Um, so there's not a lot of time. Um, <clears throat> so grow your own food. Um, if you don't know how, start. Learn. Um, start producing a lot. I have a, a friend that used to go to my church up in Kansas. And uh, she had a really good container garden in her front yard. They had a little yard, um, not a lot of sunlight in the back, and uh, they didn't want to tear up their front yard, so they did container gardening in the front. And I liked it so much, I wanted to shoot a video of it. I just never got around to it. But it was a beautiful container garden. And for whatever reason, my wife told me they're not doing that anymore. They're not gardening. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Wow, that's dumb. <laughs> it's because she was really good at it, and they produced a lot of food to feed their family. Um, so I'm telling you, garden. Um, precious metals. Hey, here's the deal. When this crash comes, the banks are going to crash, and any money you have in the bank is going to disappear. You're not going to have it anymore. Should you therefore put your money in precious metals? I say uh, no, unless you've got all your other bases taken care of. Um, you know, money sitting around doesn't do you any good. Gold sitting around doesn't do you any good. It just retains its value if you put it in, in precious metals. What you need to do is something like, well, you can take my example. I had a 401k. I cashed it in. I paid the fines, the penalties. I paid the taxes on it. And uh, I'm building an off-grid house with it. Now, it wasn't a lot of money, and I'm not building a very big house. But, I'm, you know, some people would call it a cabin. Uh, but that's what I'm doing with my money. I'm spending it right now. Uh, I'm trying to get value out of it now before this huge inflationary whatever cycle comes and I can't buy anything because there's nothing for sale or what's out there is way too expensive. So I'm turning my cash into two-by-fours, if you will, and cement. Um, <clears throat> I suggest you do that. Um, get yourself set up. Get with some other people if you can't afford a piece of land. You know, talk to Aunt Millie. I have a family that lives down the road from here. I think there's like eight or nine adults uh, loosely related. I haven't, that's the one neighbor I haven't met yet, uh, that all live together in a house. They all work, right? They all go to work every day. They all come back around, you know, five-ish, six-ish, um, in their vehicles, but they're all living in one place, one little ranch. Um, it's a good plan, right? They're gonna, they're gonna be a com instant community, uh, when things happen. Um, so work together, grow your food, pay off anything you don't want to lose. And yeah, if you still have extra money laying around, sure, put it in silver, put it in gold. Um, but not until you've taken care of your bases, your basics. And really, guys, I suggest you get on it. Um, bottom line, basic preparedness covers a myriad of, of scenarios. You should have uh, stored food, um, at least a few months of stored food. Um, but that doesn't get you through a depression, right? That gets you through the initial uh, panicky time. you got to be able to produce your own food. You have to be able to produce your own stuff. And so get out there, get to work, start doing it. Winter's coming. Uh, I hope I see you out there.